Michael Polanyi, Hungarian, Polixic Mihaly, the 11th of March 1891 to the 22nd of February 1976, was a Hungarian-British polymath who made important theoretical contributions to physical chemistry, economics, and philosophy. He argued that positivism supplies a false account of knowing, which if taken seriously undermines humanity's highest achievements. His wide-ranging research in physical science included chemical kinetics, X-ray diffraction, and adsorption of gases. He pioneered the theory of fiber diffraction analysis in 1921, and the dislocation theory of plastic deformation of ductile metals and other materials in 1934. He emigrated to Germany, in 1926 becoming a chemistry professor at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in Berlin, and then in 1933 to England, becoming first a chemistry professor, and then a social sciences professor at the University of Manchester. Two of his pupils and his son won Nobel Prizes in chemistry. In 1944 Polanyi was elected to the Royal Society. The contributions which Polanyi made to the social sciences, for example his application of the concept of a polycentric spontaneous order to intellectual inquiry, were developed in the context of his opposition to central planning. Life Early life Polanyi, born Polixic Mihaly in Budapest, was the fifth child of Mihaly and Cecilia Polixic born as Cecilia Wohl, secular Jews from Ungvar then in Hungary but now in Ukraine and Wilno, then Russian Empire, respectively. His father's family were entrepreneurs, while his mother's father, Asher Lazarovich Volume 1833 after 1906 was the senior teacher of Jewish history at the Vilna Rabbinic Seminary, from which he had graduated as a rabbi. The family moved to Budapest and Magyarized their surname to Polanyi. His father built much of the Hungarian railway system, but lost most of his fortune in 1899 when bad weather caused a railway building project to go over budget. He died in 1905. Cecilia Polanyi established a salon that was well known among Budapest's intellectuals, and which continued until her death in 1939. His older brother was Karl Polanyi, the political economist and anthropologist, and his niece was Eva Ziesel, a world-renowned ceramist. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Education. In 1909, after leaving his teacher training secondary school, Gymnasium, Polanyi studied to be a physician, obtaining his medical diploma in 1914. He was an active member of the Galilei Society. With the support of Ignac Pfeiffer, professor of chemistry at the Joseph Technical University of Budapest, he obtained a scholarship to study chemistry at the Technische Hochschule in Karlsruhe, Germany. In the First World War, he served in the Austro-Hungarian Army as a medical officer, and was sent to the Serbian Front. While on sick leave in 1916, he wrote a PhD thesis on adsorption. His research, which was encouraged by Albert Einstein, was supervised by Gustav Buchbach, and in 1919 the University of Budapest awarded him a doctorate. Topic. Career In October 1918, Mihaly Karoly established the Hungarian Democratic Republic, and Polanyi became secretary to the Minister of Health. When the Communists seized power in March 1919, he returned to medicine. When the Hungarian Soviet Republic was overthrown, Polanyi emigrated to Karlsruhe in Germany, and was invited by Fritz Haber to join the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute für Faserstiftchemie in Berlin. In 1923 he converted to Christianity, and in a Roman Catholic ceremony married Magda Elisabeth Kemeny. In 1926 he became the professorial head of department of the Institut für Physikalische Chemie und Elektrochemie. In 1929, Magda gave birth to their son John, who was awarded a Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1986. Their other son, George Polanyi, who predeceased him, became a well-known economist. His experience of runaway inflation and high unemployment in Weimar Germany led Polanyi to become interested in economics. With the coming to power in 1933 of the Nazi Party, he accepted a chair in physical chemistry at the University of Manchester. Two of his pupils, Eugene Wigner and Melvin Calvin went on to win a Nobel Prize. Because of his increasing interest in the social sciences, Manchester University created a new chair in social science 1948 for him. 
In 1944 Polanyi was elected a member of the Royal Society, and on his retirement from the University of Manchester in 1958 he was elected a Senior Research Fellow at Merton College, Oxford. In 1962 he was elected a Foreign Honorary Member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. <laughs> Work Physical chemistry Polanyi's scientific interests were extremely diverse, including work in chemical kinetics, X-ray diffraction, and the adsorption of gases at solid surfaces. He is also well known for his potential adsorption theory, which was disputed for quite some time. In 1921, he laid the mathematical foundation of fiber diffraction analysis. In 1934, Polanyi, at about the same time as G. I. Taylor and Egan Oroen, realized that the plastic deformation of ductile materials could be explained in terms of the theory of dislocations developed by Vito Volterra in 1905. The insight was critical in developing the field of solid mechanics. <laughs> Freedom and community In 1936, as a consequence of an invitation to give lectures for the Ministry of Heavy Industry in the USSR, Polanyi met Bukharin, who told him that in socialist societies all scientific research is directed to accord with the needs of the latest five-year plan. Polanyi noted what had happened to the study of genetics in the Soviet Union once the doctrines of Trofim Lysenko had gained the backing of the state. Demands in Britain, for example by the Marxist John Desmond Bernal, for centrally planned scientific research led Polanyi to defend the claim that science requires free debate. Together with John Baker, he founded the Influential Society for Freedom in Science. In a series of articles, republished in The Contempt of Freedom 1940 and The Logic of Liberty 1951, Polanyi claimed that cooperation amongst scientists is analogous to the way agents coordinate themselves within a free market. Just as consumers in a free market determine the value of products, science is a spontaneous order that arises as a consequence of open debate amongst specialists. Science contrary to the claims of Bukharin, flourishes when scientists have the liberty to pursue truth as an end in itself. S. Scientists, freely making their own choice of problems and pursuing them in the light of their own personal judgment, are in fact co-operating as members of a closely knit organization. Such self-coordination of independent initiatives leads to a joint result which is unpremeditated by any of those who bring it about. Any attempt to organize the group under a single authority would eliminate their independent initiatives, and thus reduce their joint effectiveness to that of the single person directing them from the center. It would, in effect, paralyze their cooperation. He derived the phrase spontaneous order from Gestalt psychology, and it was adopted by the classical liberal economist Friedrich Hayek, although the concept can be traced back to at least Adam Smith. Polanyi unlike Hayek, argued that there are higher and lower forms of spontaneous order, and he asserted that defending scientific inquiry on utilitarian or skeptical grounds undermined the practice of science. He extends this into a general claim about free societies. Polanyi defends a free society not on the negative grounds that we ought to respect private liberties, but on the positive grounds that public liberties facilitate our pursuit of objective ideals. According to Polanyi, a free society that strives to be value neutral undermines its own justification. But it is not enough for the members of a free society to believe that ideals such as truth, justice, and beauty are objective, they also have to accept that they transcend our ability to wholly capture them. The objectivity of values must be combined with acceptance that all-knowing is fallible. In Full Employment and Free Trade 1948, Polanyi analyzes the way money circulates around an economy, and in a monetarist analysis that, according to Paul Craig Roberts, was 30 years ahead of its time, he argues that a free market economy should not be left to be wholly self-adjusting. A central bank should attempt to moderate economic booms, busts via a strict, loose monetary policy. Topic. All knowing is personal. In his book Science, Faith and Society, 1946, Polanyi set out his opposition to a positivist account of science, noting that it ignores the role personal commitments play in the practice of science. Polanyi was invited to give the prestigious Gifford Lectures in 1951 52 at Aberdeen. A revised version of his lectures were later published as Personal Knowledge. 1958. 
In this book Polanyi claims that all knowledge claims including those that derive from rules rely on personal judgments. He denies that a scientific method can yield truth mechanically. All knowing, no matter how formalized, relies upon commitments. Polanyi argued that the assumptions that underlie critical philosophy are not only false, they undermine the commitments that motivate our highest achievements. He advocates a fiduciary post-critical approach, in which we recognize that we believe more than we can prove, and know more than we can say. A knower does not stand apart from the universe, but participates personally within it. Our intellectual skills are driven by passionate commitments that motivate discovery and validation. According to Polanyi, a great scientist not only identifies patterns, but also chooses significant questions likely to lead to a successful resolution. Innovators risk their reputation by committing to a hypothesis. Polanyi cites the example of Copernicus, who declared that the Earth revolves around the Sun. He claims that Copernicus arrived at the Earth's true relation to the Sun not as a consequence of following a method, but via the greater intellectual satisfaction he derived from the celestial panorama as seen from the Sun instead of the Earth. His writings on the practice of science influenced Thomas Kuhn and Paul Feyerabend. Polanyi rejected the claim by British empiricists that experience can be reduced into sense data, but he also rejects the notion that indwelling within sometimes incompatible interpretive frameworks traps us within them. Our tacit awareness connects us, albeit fallibly, with reality. It supplies us with the context within which our articulations have meaning. Contrary to the views of his colleague and friend Alan Turing, whose work at the Victoria University of Manchester prepared the way for the first modern computer, he denied that minds are reducible to collections of rules. His work influenced the critique by Hubert Dreyfus of first generation artificial intelligence. It was while writing Personal Knowledge that he identified the structure of tacit knowing. He viewed it as his most important discovery. He claimed that we experience the world by integrating our subsidiary awareness into a focal awareness. In his later work, for example his Terry Lectures, later published as The Tacit Dimension 1966, he distinguishes between the phenomenological, instrumental, semantic, and ontological aspects of tacit knowing, as discussed but not necessarily identified as such in his previous writing. Topic. Critique of reductionism In Life's Irreducible Structure, 1968, Polanyi argues that the information contained in the DNA molecule is not reducible to the laws of physics and chemistry. Although a DNA molecule cannot exist without physical properties, these properties are constrained by higher level ordering principles. In Transcendence and Self Transcendence, 1970, Polanyi criticizes the mechanistic worldview that modern science inherited from Galileo. Polanyi advocates emergence i.e. the claim that there are several levels of reality and of causality. He relies on the assumption that boundary conditions supply degrees of freedom that, instead of being random, are determined by higher level realities, whose properties are dependent on but distinct from the lower level from which they emerge. An example of a higher level reality functioning as a downward causal force is consciousness, intentionality, generating meanings, intentionality. Mind is a higher level expression of the capacity of living organisms for discrimination. Our pursuit of self-set ideals such as truth and justice transforms our understanding of the world. The reductionistic attempt to reduce higher level realities into lower level realities generates what Polanyi calls a moral inversion, in which the higher is rejected with moral passion. Polanyi identifies it as a pathology of the modern mind and traces its origins to a false conception of knowledge. Although it is relatively harmless in the formal sciences, that pathology generates nihilism in the humanities. Polanyi considered Marxism an example of moral inversion. The state, on the grounds of an appeal to the logic of history, uses its coercive powers in ways that disregard any appeals to morality. Topic: Bibliography. <inaudible> 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 See also Bell Evans Polanyi Principle, Ehring Polanyi Equation, Credo ut intelligum, Knowledge management, List of Christians in Science and Technology, Michael Polanyi Center, George Holmes Howison's Personal Idealism, Polanyi's Paradox 
Topic Notes Topic Further reading 